New evidence has come out challenging the Pentagon's version of the tragic events during the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, according to a CNN report. On August 26, 2021, a suicide bomber attacked Kabul airport, resulting in the deaths of 13 U.S. service members and about 170 Afghans. The Pentagon has maintained that all casualties were caused by the bomb alone. However, newly released GoPro footage from a Marine on the scene reveals multiple episodes of gunfire immediately following the blast, far more than the Pentagon stated three bursts. This five minutes of footage shows at least 11 separate instances of gunfire within four minutes, contradicting official reports. This comes as the Department of Defense released the results of the two-year supplemental review this month, finding no new information disclosed in public testimony since March 2023 had any material impact on the original investigation's findings. CNN interviews with U.S. military personnel described the gunfire originated from a nearby group of Marines. An Afghan doctor reported treating many for gunshot wounds, not just blast injuries, saying that over 70 of the dead were killed by gunfire. Explosion injuries come with uh, severe injuries, you know, a lots of uh, hole in the bodies. But the uh, people who were shot, at, they had just one or two hole, exact in the chest or in the head. 170 people were killed totally. But uh, the register, what we had, maybe 145. And by your estimation, about half? More than half, I think, were uh, killed by gunshot. In response to Dr. Ahmadi's statement about treating gunshot wounds after the attack, the Pentagon claimed he was mistaken. Subsequently, he was never approached by investigators. Officials claimed the shots that rang out were warning shots. In 2022, U.S. Central Command released their findings and described the attack as a lone suicide bomber, indicating nobody could have been hit with gunfire. The investigation found no definitive proof that anyone was ever hit or killed by gunfire, either U.S. or Afghan. This conclusion was based upon the careful consideration of sworn testimony of more than 100 witnesses, and especially those witnesses in observation towers, both American and British, who were in locations unaffected by the blast and that had commanding views of the scene before, during, and after the explosive attack. However, one month after the 2021 attack, an officer interviewed by CBS praised a Marine in his charge for putting down an opposing gunman. He's blown off his feet and still has his wits about him, shot through the shoulder, immediately recovers his weapon and puts the opposing gunman down. Christian Sanchez, who sustained a left arm injury in the blast, told the BRICS podcast that he returned fire immediately afterward. The same Marine, Major Sudfin, praised on CBS News. Like all I hear is ringing and the f***ing flashes going on. And then I start hearing snaps. And I start realizing that's a f***ing dude shooting at me. And I like, I'm still on the ground and everything feels like a slow motion, like, I don't know. Like, everything felt so slow. I remember swaying, and I'm looking for my, I started freaking out, because I couldn't find my rifle. So I'm pretty sure I had it on sling, like, I, I can't remember what happened, but my rifle wasn't on me, and I freaked out, and I, Grabbed the first, like the first thing I found, which I'm pretty sure it was this dead dude, and I can't remember whose it was. And I took it off of him, like I got to the concrete um, barrier, and I just started shooting at the dude. Many U.S. servicemen who say they witnessed extensive gunfire in the aftermath of the bombing have spoken out on social media. Officials have refuted these claims, dismissing them as a product of traumatic brain injury from a blast concussion. The Pentagon has only released five minutes of edited drone footage from the aftermath. You can find links to those videos on our website, san.com.